Set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you grow into the person who can. With this quote setting the stage for today's proceedings, and on behalf of all the students across the three Indus schools, I extend a warm welcome to our guests joining us from different parts of the world for the launch of the Indus Startup School. Chairman of the Indus Trust, Mr. H. B. Jairaj, board members, Dr. Kumar Malavali, Professor Shivram Malavali, and Mr. Sushil Mantri. Good morning, and we thank you for taking your time out to be with us today. We are grateful for your support, strong leadership through challenges, and sustained vision of excellence. A very good morning to our CEO, Lieutenant General Arjun Ray, our Principal of Indus Bangalore, Mrs. Sarojini Rao, Principal Indus Pune, Mr. Sandeep Chhabra, and Principal Indus Hyderabad, Mrs. Navera Pasha, our special invitees, parent mentors, members of staff, parents, and students. Just like many of my peers, I applied to the startup school because it gave me an opportunity to learn about and develop competencies required to be entrepreneurially minded, not just in the business sense, but for life. Communication, critical thinking, grit, collaboration, resilience, volition, self-efficacy, innovation, and of course, leadership. Despite becoming commonplace in our classroom, the opportunity to truly experience and develop these skills in a real world setting guided by experts, no less, and in this case, our parent mentors, was an exciting prospect. One that lay in stark contrast to most of the hypothetical classroom learning we had done before. Alongside this, I believe that it would be a platform to utilize the strengths I already possess, and with the help of my mentors, create something I would truly be passionate about, thereby giving me the chance to give back to society in an empowering and transformational manner. I also believe that this would complement my IB education, whose philosophy is focused solely on conceptual understanding and relevance. And all of these thoughts culminated in my application to the startup school. And I'm certain that every student here shares similar thoughts. Why else would eight of my seniors in grade 12 commit to a gap year to pursue this course? We are excited, determined, and eager to embark on our entrepreneurial journey. On behalf of all the students and staff, I would also like to place on record our gratitude to our chief mentor, Lieutenant General Arjun Ray, for his continuous efforts in raising the bar and setting new benchmarks in our educational journey. A soldier scholar of the Indian Army, General Ray has wide ranging experience in matters and conflict management, but is also deep rooted with a passion for social transformation. He is the CEO and MD of the Indus Trust and provides vision and strategic directions to all Indus international schools and institutions where, under his leadership, 14 institutions, including the three IB schools, the, the School of Leadership, the Indus Training and Research Institute, the eight early learning centers, and the International Community School, which is the world's first equal opportunity school, were all set up. IB World has acknowledged General Ray to be one of the six IB World School leaders for rethinking education and making high quality education affordable to the underprivileged. Education World awarded General Ray the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014. The Startup School is yet another moonshot idea from General Ray to us. It is the first of its kind in the world in K-12 education, where students will pursue a twinning program and will be one of the pillars that will drive and further strengthen the innovation culture in Indus schools. General Ray, may I please request for you to address the audience. Thank you very much, uh, Aman. Uh, once again, on um, behalf of the Indus fraternity, I once again welcome Mr. Jairaj, our chairman of our board, our trustees, Mr. Kumar Malavalli, Mr. Sushil Mantri, and Professor Shivram Malavalli. I also welcome Arvind and Mai Merigiri, who are the chairpersons of the Altam board. As many of you may know, that they are the promoters for the Indus Altam International School, which is coming up in Belgaum and which will be operational from 1st of June next year. Ladies and gentlemen, to reinforce what Aman just spoke to you, today is a landmark day in the history of Indus. It is a landmark day for the entire community of schools in the world. So far, startup ideas only happen after college is over or during one's career. But this is for the first time that a moonshot innovation has been done to prepare children for a future we do not know. 
a future that is unstable and a future that is becoming increasingly uncertain and ambiguous. Uh, it is the first of its kind in the world and we hope there will be many more. I would like to place on record that had it not been for the generous and willing support of the Indus Bennett mentors, this vision, this innovation would never have seen the light of day. We owe you, ladies and gentlemen, our deepest gratitude. You are a shining example, not only of stewardship, but Kiran talks about. Example of commitment to innovation, entrepreneurship, and the Indus vision. We are fortunate here to have with us from the Silicon Valley Dr. Kumar Malavalli, one of our board and founding members of, of the Indus. We a lot for seeing the idea of entrepreneurship in our mind 19 years back. And now, with this long journey of nearly two decades, I hope to Kumar Malvi, you will be happy that your vision and your dream is seeing the light of day. So fortunate to have with us from the Silicon Valley, and particularly from the Bay Area, a very well-known Indian entrepreneur, Mr. Mr. Vish Mitra. He is popularly known in the Bay Area as a mentor capitalist personified as one of the top 10 influencers in the Silicon Valley. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us here uh, this morning. The response and endorsements from parents and students have been overwhelming. Analysts have selected 42 students from each of our three schools. Many may wonder why this odd number, why 42, why not 40, why not 50? Well, there has always got to be a twist in the tail. There has to be some sort of a mystery which is kept our sleeves over here. Well, the number 42 is derived from the book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. It's a famous book and a famous movie. In the narrative, the protagonists ask a supercomputer called Deep Thought is the ultimate question of life, the universe, everything. Deep Thought, the supercomputer, takes seven and a half million years to calculate the answer. And the answer is 42. You may like to go to Google and check that in all cultures, in all religions, 42 is a magic number in our scriptures, in our books, and in our life. So those who did not make it to the 42 should not despair. You are entrepreneurs in the making. We are going to nurture you also. The fact that you have shown your intent, your genuine intent, is enough. We will ensure that with the right type of nurturing, you will be able to sidestep at an early stage into the mainstream and take it from 42 to 84 and even beyond. And I'm sure that based on our experience, the cohorts next year will be much larger. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a world which is characterized by exponential technologies, AI, machine learning, big data, and now many of you may not know the new magic acronym is GPT, GPT-3. It's an open source language prediction model that brings us a few steps short of singularity. AI merges with human intelligence and surpasses it. The world is characterized by VUCA, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, a state that is not an event, but continues unabated for months and for years. It is characterized by obsolescence in jobs, in technology, in leadership, knowledge, 
even we human beings are becoming obsolete. How many of us have the skills, agencies of the head, heart, and mind to reskill ourselves and to reinvent ourselves continuously? The escalator is moving, but most of us are standing still. The world is characterized by a high rate of change. We are changing. The people around us are changing over there. Change is the new normal. Change is the new constant. The only thing that does change is the vision and the purpose. And this is what entrepreneurs have. They have a purpose. They have a vision. And that is what will guide them through this maze of the new world that has emerged. And the fifth most important aspect by what is behind the concept of the startup school is that climate collapse has already arrived at our doorstep. It's threatening the very survival of our planet. And I do hope that many of our young entrepreneurs will find insights from a very famous book which has just come out called Drawdown where all the aspects of climate change are updated and analyzed. And out of this, some innovations must happen. Our basic premise for succeeding in such a world is what the Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus of Bangladesh, he said, all human beings are entrepreneurs. All human beings are entrepreneurs. This, ladies and gentlemen, and my young friends, is the purpose of education in the 21st century. It is the purpose of education at Indus. This is the Indus vision. This is the Indus mission. And this is the Indus commitment to you, to your parents, to your mentors, and to everybody. Life entrepreneurs, when you graduate from Indus, you will be capable of launching your own startups, if you so desire, immediately after school graduation. And instead of seeking employment, you'll be giving employment. Entrepreneurship, I would like you young entrepreneurs to understand and regard, not in a narrow sense, but as becoming entrepreneurs of your own life. From a narrow business perspective only, that is the great option that you have, but as entrepreneurs of your life, to be able to manage your life in a VUCA world, to invest yourself heavily, that is called the beta mindset to invest heavily in time, knowledge, money, resources, to reskill, to reinvent yourself continuously, similar to what a business entrepreneur would do. Therefore, in order to be successful, irrespective of what your definition of success may be, all human beings are entrepreneurs. That is how from the caves to artificial intelligence, human beings evolved. From a water molecule to where we are today. Otherwise, we would have remained as chimpanzees. I would like you to understand that you are the CEO of your life. You have to take charge of your life. The time has now come for nations, for corporations, for businesses, for institutions, for individuals to be future ready. To be future ready is to be startup ready. You have to be a startup you. And the question that you have to ask yourself is, am I startup ready? must ask the question, is my child, is my daughter, is my son startup ready? When your daughters and sons graduate from the Indus Startup School, their startup, their startup mentality will be covered by what I would call is the entrepreneur's success mantra. An indelible beta mindset. That is an attitude that believes in investing massively which believes in dreaming big, thinking big, which believes in seeking opportunities when others see them as obstacles. Incidentally, although the startup school was conceived before COVID-19, it is during COVID-19 pandemic launched this huge initiative. We would like you to think that Seek opportunities when others see them as obstacles. I'd like you to think intelligent, take intelligent risks 
when others seek refuge. And we would like you to fail fast and learn fast and to be able to pivot with plan B should the need arise. And I think that is a very, very important aspect for the young entrepreneurs to understand. Above all, the psyche of the entrepreneur must be shaped by the thought that finished is an F word. Finished is F word. Because each one of us is work in progress. To continue evolving, to reimagine ourselves at every stage in our life, to reskill, to reinvent, and to restart where we failed. Finally, to all our young entrepreneurs, I say, adapt to the future. Invest in yourself continuously. Manage yourself, your life, your career as if it was a startup business. Fail fast, fail early, and learn fast. You can no longer count on the traditional model of your employer once you graduate from school and college to develop your competencies and technical know-how. It is your responsibility to train yourself and take charge of your own life. Your mind, therefore, has to be in a permanent state of beta. As young entrepreneurs, you must understand that work rules have changed. Therefore, this whole concept of on your marks, get set, ready, go, is an outdated notion. It's an industrial age notion. Mantra is, you have to have two plans. Plan A, aim, fire. Aim, fire. Aim, fire. Plan B, pivot. Pivot as you learn. Because when the first shot is fired in battle, all your plans will change. I would like to make a special mention of our dream team, without whom the vision of making your daughters and sons entrepreneurs would have evaporated. I start with Sarojini, the principal of Indus Bangalore, who helped me to conceptualize the entrepreneurship model and to integrate the startup school curriculum with the innovation culture of our Indus schools. I would like to thank Preeti Prabhu, who is the main anchor for coordinating and implementing the startup curriculum. I would like a special thank you to Ravi Narayan, who is an Indus parent from Bangalore. He is the chief innovation officer of the state of Telangana, who provides us professional support in creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem. It's absolutely a must. An entrepreneurial ecosystem that includes MNCs, NASCOM, the Innovation Knowledge Park in Bangalore, the Telangana Tea Hub, uh, which is India's pioneering innovation ecosystem, the Thai chapters in the cities of Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Pune. I would like to make a special mention of my friend Rosto Ravanan, the former CEO of Mindtree, who was a great source of encouragement and offered us valuable advice on this selection process, the challenge selection process of students for the startup school. Last but not the least, my deepest gratitude, our deepest offerings go out to parent volunteers, who we call parent mentors, who have agreed to spare two hours every week, apart from their busy life as the CEOs of their companies, to mentor each student entrepreneur. Young entrepreneurs, you are in the hands of the best brains, of the best success stories in the cities of Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Pune. This faculty you will find nowhere in the world. I would also like to make a mention about the parent volunteers, that you have redefined the role of parents. On the responsibilities for the stewardship of children who are not your biological children. You have enabled us to be exponential. You have helped us to create the startup vision for tomorrow. We just don't know how to stop thanking you. Thank you once again, everybody. Each one of you, young entrepreneurs, 
the parent mentors, teachers, and all of us who are involved in this project over here, you are part of the Apollo spaceship that has helped Indus take that one giant leap in school education. Thank you very, very much. And may God bless each one of you. And we hope to see you from the uh, last week of September in the saddle at the starting blocks. Remember, aim fire. Aim fire. Aim fire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those insights, General J. I now invite Mr. H.B. Jairaj, Chairman of the Indus Trust, to formally inaugurate the website for the Startup School. Thank you so much, Pant. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to declare that the Indus Startup School website is now live and open for viewing. The video you will see on the homepage is an example of innovation and entrepreneurship at Indus. Congratulations to the entire team. Congratulations to one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gerard. An entrepreneur, renowned philanthropist, and visionary in the field of storage network, Dr. Kumar Malavali is the first Indian to be inducted into the Silicon Valley Engineering Hall of Fame. Dr. Malavali's philanthropy in the fields of education extends from digital learning centers in rural India to American institutions for higher education. As a trustee, he contributed significantly to promoting the entrepreneurship curriculum and wellness philosophy of the Indus schools. Dr. Malavali, I request for you to kindly share your thoughts with us. Um, Dr. Malavali. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I really, I should, I'm very excited and uh, honored to be part of this launch. I really appreciate all the, uh, you know, valuable work and effort put in by General Ray and his staff to make this achievement happen. And you know, uh, and, and also uh, kudos goes to all the members of the staff that worked hard and diligently with you to make this achievement possible. Being a serial entrepreneur, I strongly believe that every young person has a has a flame of entrepreneurship within. But that flame has to be fanned from outside to come out and shine and shine uh, to, to make sure that young person by thinking out of the box becomes a true entrepreneur and, and becomes a, a valuable entity in the society that he or she lives in. And, uh, and, and also uh, uh, my vision when in the in this school was started, and I was talking to General Ray, I very, very well remember that uh, the vision was for Indus to provide education with a difference. The difference to make students not only academically excellent, but also socially relevant with leadership and entrepreneurial qualities. The vision was also to prepare the student to be lifelong learners in an increasingly unpredictable world. It is, it is uh, very encouraging to see that more than twice as many students applied to join in the startup school, and there is a plan to accommodate those who could not be formally admitted. I really very much appreciate that. At the outset, I, I, I would also offer my sincere thanks to 35 Indus parents 
who are successful entrepreneurs and VCs that have volunteered to spare their valuable time to mentor the students of Indus Startup School and also evaluate their progress through a regular feedback. I learned that the curriculum that is being put together is, uh, is uh, designed grade specific from grades nine to 12. I'm happy to learn that the curriculum includes that the student to promote with the blueprints of the startups and present them to the judges consisting of investors and successful entrepreneurs. I encourage all these students to set up their startup on successful graduation or even earlier, hopefully. I suggest that the school also establish a mechanism to track those graduated students over time, whether the launch startup actually started the startup actually or joined other startups. And to conclude, I have some very important uh, you know, uh, uh, the advice to the budding entrepreneurs based on my own experience and my own observation of other entrepreneurs. These are very easy to follow, very common sense based things. And first of all, be very good in your area of expertise. Your idea should be practical and you should have business potential while providing solution to the real need existing in the society. Secondly, you should have very good grip on other areas of business, such as hiring right and building great teams and financial aspects also. You gotta be an all-rounder, although you are specialized in your subject, you gotta have knowledge about other things of business as well. Then thirdly, complement yourself with the people with expertise in other areas of business you do not have. Because starting a business, being a startup is a, is a teamwork. You cannot do it alone. You may have expertise in one area, but you have to complement yourself with others who have ideas, who, who have expertise in other areas of business you do not have. And most importantly, have faith in yourself while thinking out of the box. And, most, and, and also you should pay attention to the timing. Timing is very critical, very important. Listen to the market. You may have to pivot, as General Ray very rightly pointed out, you may have to pivot based on the, the, uh, the, the market dynamics. Market may change from the day you started the startup and then things will change. So you got to be quick enough, resilient enough to, to pivot. And, and, and do not, you should not tell the customer what he needs. You got to listen. You got to listen and ask customer what the customer want rather than telling them what they need. And most importantly, do not listen to naysayers. There are a lot of people who say, hey, you cannot succeed. Why are you doing this? But don't listen to the naysayers. If you have confidence in your area, idea, take the risk. And those are my sincere advice to the budding entrepreneurs. And once again, I thank everyone. I thank General Ray. Mr. Sarojini Rao, and the trustees, Mr. Jairaj, Mr. Sushil Mantri, and Mr. Professor Shuram, and all the uh, people who helped to make this incredible event happen. I wish all the best and great success to the Indus Startup, startup Group, Startup School. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to, to, to be part of this launch and uh, allowing me to speak a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your thoughts on the relevance of entrepreneurship. We'll be sure to keep those words in mind. I'd, li I'd, now, I'd now like to introduce to you Mr. Ravi Narayan. As the Chief Executive Officer of the Telangana Hub and also the Chief Innovation Officer for the State of Telangana, Mr. Narayan has led his teams on creating an ecosystem that powers next generation products and new business models, all hungry for innovation. The Telangana Tea Hub currently houses India's largest tech incubator and leads programs with companies like Boeing, Facebook, and United Technologies, to name a few. In his career spanning over two decades, Mr. Narayan has been a product engineer, 
entrepreneur, investor, mentor, and leader. He has co-founded three companies that he led from their inception to their successful acquisitions, and has been involved in many programs promoting startups, including when he was the global director of Microsoft for startups, where he helped establish the Accelerators and Cosell program. Besides advising the governments of Karnataka, Singapore, and Malaysia, Mr. Narayan has also, during his time in Bangalore, chaired the TIE Entrepreneurial Summit, NASCOM Product Conclave, and Pan IIT Conclave. Additionally, Mr. Narayan has been an Indus parent for over 16 years. It gives me immense pleasure in inviting him to address us this morning. Mr. Narayan? Thank you very much, Aman. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good um, morning to everyone and good evening to the folks from Silicon Valley. I'm uh, very happy to be speaking to you at this very, very special occasion for the Indus School and the Indus Startup School launch. Um, you know, uh, if you look back and uh, see how things have changed very, very quickly around us, my father had one career and one job throughout his entire life. I, on the other hand, had one career, but multiple jobs, sometimes working for a large corporate and sometimes working for myself. But still, it was just one career. What you as students will have is multiple careers, multiple jobs, both as uh, you know, people working for someone else or you know, creating jobs for other people. I think the one fundamental thing that you will begin to see as you launch your careers after school, after college, is that <clears throat> you will actually be problem solvers because things are changing so rapidly that your ability to depend on external factors to provide you this, uh, you know, the opportunity to build a career, take up a job, create financial stability is going to rapidly change. So the entire responsibility of your career, of your job, and of your ability to create financial stability will rest completely on you. And therefore, what, what is important for that? Your ability to solve problems. Your ability to solve problems because you are learning from the outside. As uh, Kumar just mentioned, you listen to customers. You don't tell the customers what to do. So you're con constantly listening to the external factors and figuring out what are the opportunities? What are the problems that you need to solve for? And that's what you optimize for. And in the process, if the problem is large enough, you are going to be bringing in multiple and therefore become job creators. So as you look at job creators, usually the, the visual that comes to your mind is of an you know, a very hard negotiating businessman, a winning dealing uh, kind of a businessman. That's what we've been portrayed to, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, movies and books and stuff like that. But indeed, if you look around, you know, we have our own Narayan Murthy here in, uh, in Bangalore or uh, Kumar in, in Silicon Valley or uh, Vishvishtra Mishra that was mentioned. Uh, if you look at them or even our own, Ambika, who is on this call, and uh, Amit Sumani, who is on this call, they are not necessarily the wheeling dealing uh, businessmen, but they are fundamentally problem solvers. They are actually taking the hairiest of the problems and solving them. And they, for in that process, creating you know jobs for other people. And that is, I think, a unique opportunity that each and every 40 of you have in you know available to you at this point in time what better way to get started on that process right away in school i think this is this is fantastic the way the indus school has conceived this idea and begun to create that mindset for you early on in your education now when you start talking about problem solving what does that mean? It means that you are, of course, identifying 
very, very interesting problems to solve, be it in a very commercially viable space, which is what most of the startups talk about. But India also is replete with multiple social and other problems, which is what Muhammad Yunus talked about, right? So there is so much of that that can be done. It doesn't necessarily mean that the startups that you build are going to only create you know, great valuation, attract venture capital, and so on and so forth. It could also be one that just is profitable, sustainable, and doing a fantastic job in its own way, or solving a very, very large social problem. And that's absolutely fine. In fact, if you go back to you know, a couple of centuries ago, India was the highest GDP contributor to the world for several centuries at a time. Why? Because fundamentally, we were problem solvers. We had that in our DNA, not just in the large cities as you see today, but also across the districts and the villages across India. So for that reason, I feel that it is important to first identify the problem and information is becoming very, very uh, easy to access. You know, you can go to Google, you know, search, there's a lot of material. So it's not something we can teach you uh, the, the information or the knowledge it's because we don't know what problems you are going to be solving. But what I have seen is that not only is uh, the Indus school talking about creating this Indus startup school, but they also are uh, bringing in robots into the classrooms. What do robots do? They don't know what problem you're going to solve, but they will make sure that you have the information, you have the knowledge that is necessary to solve that problem. And therefore, I, I hear that there is going to be at least five robots that are going to be in the three schools uh, once, you know, the new normal sets in. And, uh, you know, technology, as uh, General Ray pointed out, is also going to become quite handy and commonplace to all of you. There is cloud, there is AI, there is, uh, you know, various technologies that uh, is easily available to you as tools and methods to which, through which you can solve these problems. So taking all this into consideration, it is now incumbent on each and every one of you to take this opportunity to learn how to learn. Because that's what I think you can take out of this. Will you be taking out a great startup that will be funded by one of our VC friends here on the call or outside? It, you know, maybe not, or maybe you will. But even if you don't, what you will fundamentally take away is that mindset of entrepreneurialism to take on the responsibility of solving some of the biggest problems that we are faced with and in the process impacting several people and potentially creating enormous economic value for yourself and all the other people who came in on with the journey with you. So I think it's a, it's a very, very unique initiative that Indus school has stayed on. I've been with Indus since the second year of its uh, of its life, with my two older boys uh, being part of it. Uh, now they're in the US. My third son is still at Indus, and I continue the journey with Indus. And I'm very happy to see the, the convergence of what was very, very important for my son's lives and my life now coming together, uh, uh, converging at this Indus school. Very happy to see this. I congratulate the uh, the trustees of uh, Indus School. I congratulate General Ray for the the vision that he has created for this. And uh, you know, uh, Aman described it as a moonshot. Indeed, it's a moonshot. I don't see any other school anywhere in the world having done this. I used to run Microsoft for startups across the world. I've not seen any school in any of the geographies doing this. And I also uh, congratulate the principals and the staff of all the three schools across India for having taken on this initiative. And I wish you all the best. I wish you all the 42, the special 42, the very best. You guys are going to make it uh, a, a path breaking, um, you know, uh, uh, program for Indus and therefore showing other uh, kids in Indus who are all, still going through this journey. Uh, that there is indeed a role model where you not only were great students of Indus, but also 
came out with with uh, becoming entrepreneurs and innovators yourselves so again thank you very much and congratulations to all of you to having made this and uh, thank you very much again thank you so very much mr narayan and on the topic of robots i'd like to introduce to you eagle 4 the highly capable humanoid robot that will revolutionize education and transform schools as we move into the future where artificial intelligence and machine learning will dominate with its faster processing capabilities eagle 4 can deliver concepts relevance and content effortlessly ask and answer questions pick up facial cues and also recognize the speaker thereby personalizing a child's experience in a robot assisted class What's more, Eagle 4 can carry out assessments and provide real-time personalized feedback to every student. The sleek-looking robot has got it all. State-of-the-art features and best of all, a welcoming smile. Could we have the video please? Thank you. chemical reactions happen to designing spacecrafts. Let me start with a short story. In you are comparing the weight of the object to the weight of the blocks that you already know. There are many different units of measure. Let's explore deeper about what exactly is a unit. What is the difference between units and measurements? Let me think about that Vignesh. A measurement as a method. Why do we need a system of measurements? Good question Chaitali. Okay let me ask you a few questions. If I use a ruler of length. 5.5 feet. You are correct, Prasidi. Is it true or false that there is only one? The answer is false. Good attempt, Jijo, but a much better answer would be. Good job, dear students. Now it's time to conclude the assessment. Let me analyze the results. In question number four, half of the class gave the wrong answer. Let me explain. For the remaining questions, please refer to the personalized feedback and resources that you have received. <laughs> noticed that Banu and Prasidi are not paying attention. Please focus on the lesson. Thank you. The strong partnership between home and school is something we take immense pride in at Indus. We believe that parental involvement and constant feedback have played a critical role in our school's success. This partnership once again emerges with parents from across the three industry schools volunteering to mentor my peers and I in our entrepreneurship journey. We are grateful and very excited about this opportunity and are confident that we will gain much knowledge, wisdom and experience from our parent mentors. We've invited some parent mentors to share their thoughts with us today. First, Ms. Ambika Subramaniam is a venture capitalist investing across different sectors. She serves on the board of multiple startups, helping young entrepreneurs build large businesses. 
She was the co-founder of Mu Sigma, one of the largest pure play data analytics companies. And during her tenure at Mu Sigma, Ms. Subramaniam helped the company grow from a small startup to a unicorn. Prior to that, she was in user experience research at Motorola, applying learnings from psychology and anthropology in software product development. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Ambika Subramaniam, and I request her to please adjust the audience. Thank you, Aman. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thanks, General Ray, for the opportunity to be here. Um, it's been a pleasure to be a part of this program. Meeting the young students through the interviews and their essays have been very interesting. Uh, I could sense the enthusiasm, the energy level that these students bring to the table. Uh, a, a lot of them opened up about challenges they have faced in their lives and how they've overcome them and family members who have inspired them to pursue entrepreneurship. It was quite fascinating to see the maturity uh, at, at such a young age. Um, I just wanted to share one uh, quick thought, uh, sort of an advice to the first batch of students and parents. Uh, in general, startups are advised that their early adopters are um, extremely important to the product to launch well in the market and uh, to take off well in the market. The In this case, the the early adopters are the first batch of students and parents. You play a very important role in making this program successful. There will definitely be teething problems. There will be interesting execution challenges. It's part and parcel of any new venture. But it's important for the early adopters to engage well and think of themselves as co-designers and co-owners of the program and not just as customers. And that's and especially important for uh, a moonshot idea that has been brought to the table. And it, when, when we adopt that kind of attitude, it will enable us to sort of proudly claim in the future that we were the first batch that made this happen. So I ask the entire first batch to think of this program as, as your own, um, as, as if you are designing it uh, for the future batches, your feedback, your involvement in um, in as uh, as General Ray said, in pivoting along the way in how you pursue the different activities is going to be very important. So that's the only advice I have for uh, the first batch. Um, I wish all the all of you participants an amazing experience. Um, I wish all the best to General Ray, Ms. Rao, Ms. Preeti, and the entire team behind this effort. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mr. Sanjay Kulkarni from Indus Pune. Mr. Kulkarni, who believes that it is important for people to pay it forward and to use one's knowledge and experience to create employment opportunities across the country, has worked with Castrol Group for 17 years in product, brand, technology, and st strategic management, as well as marketing and sales on various assignments in India, Europe, North America, and the ASEAN sector. Mr. Sanjay Kulkarni is the founder of Genesis Solutions, a company with business verticals in consulting, sourcing, and technology. The company is in partnership with Atchison and Henkel Germany and jointly operates in the engineering and automotive industries for high-performance specialty products. Genesis Solutions has received many awards, most recently the India 5000 Best MSME Award in 2017 and the Best Sales Performance Award at the Henkel Annual Conference in 2018. I request Mr. Kulkarni to please share his thoughts with the audience. Um, Mr. Kulkarni? Um, Mr. Kulkarni, can you hear us? All right. In the meantime, I would like to request all the students to turn off their microphones. Some of um, the students have their microphones turned on. And we will wait a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Aman. Thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor and privilege to be here amongst you, representing the Parent Mentors team at Sir, so, you seem to have muted yourself, so. Yeah. So, so, Thank you, Aman. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Ladies and gentlemen. Please proceed, sir. We can hear you. Thank you. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege to be here amongst you, 
representing the parent mentor team at in the school day to share my experience and perspective towards this one of a kind venture the indus startup school my experience as a parent mentor while working very closely with this cold core team since the month of june has been great truly i witnessed an efficient organization demonstrating the culture of collaboration and professionalism the student applications and interviews help parent mentors to understand the immense potential of imagination and creativity that our young eagles and budding entrepreneurs possess which we unleashed at a very young age in this startup school this strong platform will help the students to pitch their unthinkable ideas and implement them to change the reality while addressing the global issues to all the students learning of the larger context of life entrepreneurship and life competencies at startup school will help you to integrate your life its purpose and work to be done making it more meaningful the learning of entrepreneurial mindset uh, as rightly said by general ray of ownership opportunity recognition vision innovation risk and resourcefulness will help you to lead your life with a strong purpose service and significance students as you learn grow and evolve as life entrepreneurs in this journey you will learn to leverage your strengths passion and values in your work in your life and in community engagements dramatically boosting the quality of your own life and enhancing your broader community contributions the model of collaboration and excellence will help in the establishment of a startup ecosystem connecting the integral stakeholders with the world of abundance and opportunities once again we congratulate all the 269 participants across the indus schools and their parents to think differently and courageously to join our collective startup journey thank you general ray ms priti prabhu and indus team for providing me this great opportunity to share some of my uh, thoughts and experience thank you ladies and gentlemen and have a nice day thank you so much mr kulkarni our next speaker is dr uday saxena our parent mentor from indus hyderabad and he is currently the co-founder of a startup biotech company regine innovations prior to this he has held executive and leadership positions at park davis in ann arbor Atherogenics in Atlanta, Dr. Reddy's Laboratories is the Chief Scientific Officer for India and the US regions and also as the CEO of Caris Therapeutics. Dr. Saxena was associated with the drug discovery team at Pfizer that discovered Lipitor, the largest selling drug in the pharma business with peak annual sales of 17 billion dollars. He is one of the few executives who combines excellence in science with the business side of pharma and is part of a startup which was successfully listed on Wall Street. He's a well-known speaker at international and national platforms and recipient of academic and industry honors. Dr. Saxena has also written books on cricket as well as business which are available on Amazon. Dr. Uday Saxena, may I request for you to kindly address the audience. Thank you Aman for those generous words. Um really appreciate that. I also want to first of all thank Indus management for allowing me the opportunity to speak here today. Uh it's a great pleasure. I also want to specifically thank General Ray, Ms. Nuvera Pasha, Mr. Muhammad Rizwan and Preeti Prabhu for the delightful interactions I've had with them through the course of uh, uh the startup school. So thank you very much. So let me begin by congratulating all of you for being a part of this uh, fantastic startup uh, school program. I think it's you know it's going to be an inflection point in your lives every individual in their lives has an inflection point that actually pivots them into a different direction and actually increases their uh, success rate so i strongly believe that the indus startup school 
is going to be an inflection point in the lives of many of those uh, students who are taking part here. So what's the value of the program that you're going to get into? Let me just give you two very simple examples. Uh, the first example is if you look at, you know, how the dynamics of uh, employment are changing. My father, for example, uh, was a government servant, worked in one job throughout his life, because simply because the opportunities were limited in his era, as well as the risk-taking ability was not there. If you look at my own career, I've actually changed four jobs, formed three companies. So my risk-taking ability had dramatically changed from my father's. When it comes to your generation, my strong bet is that you're neither going to be looking for a job, or even if you do look for a job, it'll be with a startup. So you will either be doing your own startup or you will actually be working for a startup, not for like a secure job. So times have evolved uh, very much. So this course that you'll be doing is actually going to be a great help for you to be an entrepreneurs and innovators of the future. So you've already uh, have encountered what I think is a very strong inflection point in your lives. Second example I'd like to give you is, you know, you often hear the fact that he or she is successful because they're lucky. That's actually not at all true. Successful individuals need strategic thinking, strong decision making, and the ability to calibrate risk taking in their lives. And believe me, the course that is structured for you here is going to teach you all of those skills. So whether you do a startup on your own or go into a different direction, the life enhancing skills that you will learn in this course are going to be fantastic for you. I'll give you an example. Um, I had um, learned, I went to Harvard Business School to learn about entrepreneurship and innovation. And what do I see now? Some of the very elements that I learned at Howard Business School are actually being going to be taught to you. I mean, that's just simply amazing. I was telling Ms. Nuera Pasha that it's amazing that my children have the opportunity to learn what Howard Business School taught me for about $100,000. So you, I think your batch is very, very lucky. Finally, I'd like to say that history has repeatedly shown that nations that are entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneuring and innovative are the ones that will lead the world tomorrow. A great example is the United States of America. So you not only have, based on this course, you not only have the challenge of enhancing your own lives, but I think you have the opportunity to change the course of how India navigates itself in the next 20 years. So. Once again, congratulations and uh, Godspeed to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saxena. Our final speaker for today is Ms. Preeti Prabhu. As Chief Philosophy Officer of the Indus Trust, Ms. Prabhu has played a key role in the curriculum design of the Startup School. Ms. Prabhu has held different roles in Indus since 2007, including that of Head of Middle School and Vice Principal in Indus Bangalore, and most recently, as principal of Indus Pune. With her background in business and economics and experience as an IB facilitator and school administrator who has worked closely with students, parents and the community, as well as on aspects such as curriculum design, school policy and governance, Ms. Prabhu's experience will certainly add value to the startup school design in progress over the coming months. Ms. Prabhu, may I request for you to share a brief outline on what awaits my peers and I as we begin our journey at the Indus Startup School. Thank you so much, Aman. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. What awaits our young entrepreneurs is a warm yet demanding experience. In other words, there will be high expectations from every student because we believe they are capable of thinking not just outside the box, but in fact are capable of thinking outside of the building. At the same time, these expectations are set within an enriching and nurturing environment where students will be supported through mentoring, coaching, and constant feedback. The curriculum is age-specific, where rigor is gradually built and remains balanced, thus ensuring students succeed in both their IB as well as their startup school programs. The curriculum focuses on the development of life, leadership, business, and technological competencies in the child. 
So while students are learning how to write business plans, develop their prototypes in a, into minim, minimal viable products in business incubation centers, learn more about the marketing, finance, funding, or legal aspects of setting up their business, they will also be coached on leadership and life skills, such as higher purpose, vision, visualization techniques for peak performance, values in action, strategic and principal leadership. Our students will also pursue courses in emerging technologies, such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. Furthermore, a critical component of the course includes ethics, deep reading, climate change, and data science. The curriculum is set within a 40-20-40 framework, where the first 40% will be experiential and collaborative learning avenues that include comp competitions and challenges set in the real world. The 20% involves coaching and mentoring feedback along with assessment, and the remaining 40% will involve self-directed learning by the student. I want to clarify here that self-directed learning does not mean leaving our students to figure out the curriculum on their own, no. But instead, this refers to guiding them on how to learn, how to think, and how to ask the right questions. We will also identify apprenticeship opportunities for our students to pursue both in India and abroad. As a school, just like in life, we believe that feedback is critical in our pursuit of excellence and in being lifelong learners. A robust 360 degree feedback mechanism will be in place where feedback from the student, parent mentor, and the school will be analyzed. And this in turn will allow for timely intervention and overall success of the course. A unique feature of the startup school is that our students will have blockchain accounts, which are excellent tools for lifelong learning and revolutionize the way entrepreneurs can measure business impact and value. Blockchain accounts will help record various milestones in our students' entrepreneurial journey, com competency profiling, and also provide evidence for funding by venture capitalists and angel investors. And of course, it will play a critical role in college placements as well. I want to end by urging our young entrepreneurs to continue with this optimism, high energy, determination, enthusiasm, and open-mindedness that we have seen in all of you during the interview and selection process. Seek out opportunities from the curveballs and challenges that life throws your way, as this will ensure you are not able to just adapt, but thrive in this VUCA Plus environment. So students, the parent mentors, faculty members, and I eagerly look forward to working with you. We can't wait, wait to witness the amazing things each of you is going to do at the startup school, which in turn will unlock your potential, make you future ready, and also strengthen the innovation culture at Indus. All the very best, and I thank you for your time and patient listening. Thank you very much, Ms. Prabhu. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for taking your time out today from your schedules and joining us this morning. My fellow Startup School students and I are grateful and look forward to enriching an envi environment and the plethora of opportunities that await us on our entrepreneurship journey. Take care and I wish each of you a wonderful weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you.